ओके सर गुड इवनिंग एवरीबॉडी वेलकम टू दिस इवनिंग एपिसोड ऑफ परस्यू दिस इज परस्यू सिक्सटीन एच विच इज हिमेटोलॉजी नॉन न्यू प्लास्टिक पोल्यूशन ऑफ डब्ल्यू बी सी वी आर स्ट्रीमिंग लाइव फ्रॉम द कॉलेज ऑफ मेडिसिन एंड जे एन एम एच हॉस्पिटल कल्याणी वाया कोलकाता वी हैव अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक मोनो न्यूक्लियोसिस सिंड्रोम एंड टू स्पीक ऑन दैट वी हैव अ वेरी यंग एनर्जेटिक वेरी नॉलेजेबल डॉक्टर प्रियंका माइथी who is an MBBS MD pathology from the famous IPGMER Kolkata presently she is an assistant professor in the department of pathology at the college of medicine JNMH Kalyani she's got multiple publications in national and international journals with areas of interest in cytopathology hematopathology and oncopathology before i ask dr maithi to start let me request all of you to keep your mic muted your camera off and please don't share your screen with this let me request uh, dr mithi ma'am please click on that present now and start sharing your screen just your click on that your entire screen option then click on the center of the screen and press share yeah i can see your screen now just open your powerpoint from the below double click it yeah and put it on the slide show mode yeah double click that yeah just press that hide and you are good to go start please thank you so much please start uh thank you sir for the kind introduction good evening everybody the topic of my talk today is mononucleosis syndrome the following things will be dealt with introduction pathogenesis serological changes pathological changes clinical features complications diagnosis treatment and differential diagnosis infectious mononucleosis is a benign self limited lymphoproliferative disorder 90% cases of infectious mononucleosis are caused by epstein barr virus epstein barr virus also known as human herpes virus 4 is a double stranded dna virus belonging to the family herpes viridi 5 to 10% cases of infectious mononucleosis are caused by cytomegalovirus less common causes of mononucleosis syndrome or mononucleosis like illness are hiv infection hhv6 toxoplasmosis viral hepatitis streptococcal pharyngitis rubella lymphoma and drugs like phenytoin and carbamazepine today i'll talk mostly about infectious mononucleosis or im caused by epstein barr virus im caused by ebv is characterized by fever sore throat generalized lymphadenopathy splenomegaly and appearance in the blood of atypical reactive t lymphocytes also known as mononucleosis cells ebv spreads by contact with oral secretions ebv frequently transmitted from asymptomatic adults to infants and among young adults by transfer of saliva during kissing therefore also called kissing ditties i am a principally in late adolescents or young adults among upper socio economic classes in developed nations it is uncommon after the age of 30 years and rare after the age of 40 years after the acute infection has been resolved a lifelong subclinical infection is maintained with a low frequency of infected b cells and detectable virus in the saliva in the developing and the underdeveloped nations primary infection with ebv occurs in childhood that usually results in immunity without developing typical clinical manifestations of im this immunity can be detected serologically and is associated with lifelong protection in these nations the rate of seroconversion before the age of 10 years can be so high that clinically evident im is rare pathogenesis of infectious mononucleosis ebv is transmitted by close human contact 
frequently through the saliva during kissing. EBV initially infects epithelial cells of oropharynx and salivary gland where it replicates and then spreads to underlying lymphoid tissue, tonsils and adenoids where mature B cells are infected. The virus then spreads through the bloodstream. The proliferation and expansion of EBV infected B cells along with reactive T cells during IM result in enlargement of lymphoid tissue. An EBV enveloped glycoprotein binds CD21 which is present on B cells. CD21 is actually the receptor for the C3D component of complement present on B cells. EBV can cause two kinds of infection in B cells. In a minority of B cells, infection is lytic, leading to viral replication and eventual B cell lysis accompanied by release of virions, which may infect other B cells. In most B cells, EBV establishes latent infection during which the virus persists as an extra chromosomal episode. EBV encoded proteins that are important in the establishment of latent infection in B cell are number one, Epstein Barr nuclear antigen 1, also known as EBNA1. This binds the EBV genome to host cell chromosomes during mitosis. When infected host cells divide, the viral episomes are partitioned evenly to daughter cells. 2. Latent membrane protein 1 or LMP1. This drives B cell activation and proliferation. LMP1 mimics an active form of CD40 which is a B cell surface receptor. Like activated CD40, LMP1 binds to TNF receptor associated factors. These factors trigger downstream events that activate NF kappa B and JAKSTAT signaling pathway. LMP1 prevents apoptosis by activating BCL2. 3. Epstein Barr nuclear antigen 2 or EBNA2. This promotes B cell activation and replication. It turns on the transcription of several host cell genes, including genes that encode proteins that drive cell cycle entry, such as cyclin D. 4. Homologue of interleukin 10. This inhibits macrophages and dendritic cells and suppresses antiviral T cell responses. As a result of the actions of these EBV proteins, B cells that are latently infected with EBV are activated and begin to proliferate and to disseminate. This uncontrolled expanding polyclonal population of EBV infected B cells secrete antibodies. Of note, people with X-linked A-gamma globulinemia who lack B cells do not become latently infected with EBV or shed virus. In infectious mononucleosis, EBV is shed in saliva. Memory B cells are the reservoir for EBV in the body. When patients are treated with acyclovir, shedding of EBV from the oropharynx stops, but the virus persists in B cells. The symptoms of IM appear upon initiation of the host immune response. Cellular immunity is more important than humoral immunity in controlling EBV infection. Cellular immunity mediated by CD8 positive cytotoxic T cells and natural killer cells. The atypical lymphocytes seen in the blood characteristic of IM are mainly EBV specific CD8 positive cytotoxic T cells, but also include CD16 positive natural killer cells. The CD8 positive cytotoxic T cells are viral peptides presented on MHC class 1 molecules. Reactive proliferation of T cells in lymphoid tissue lead to lymphadenopathy and splenomegaly. 
During IM, there is an inverted CD4 to CD8 T cell ratio. The percentage of CD4 positive T cells decreases while there are large clonal expansions of CD8 positive T cells. In healthy persons, humoral and cellular responses to EBV act as breaks on viral shedding, resulting in the elimination of B cells expressing the full complement of EBV latency associated genes. In hosts with acquired defects in cellular immunity, example AIDS, organ transplantation, reactivation of EBV can lead to B cell proliferation. B cell proliferation may cause B cell lymphomas. B cell proliferation accompanied by translocation 814 can cause Burkitt lymphoma. So here we can see after ingestion of the virus, it infects the epithelium of oropharynx where it replicates from there, it spreads to the underlying lymphoid tissue where it infects the B cells, leading to proliferation of B cells. This causes lymphadenopathy. Proliferation of B cells, if accompanied with translocation 814, can cause Burkitt lymphoma. Serological changes in infectious mononucleosis. Three categories of antibodies are produced as a result of EBV infection. Virus-specific antibodies, heterophile antibodies, autoimmune antibodies. Virus-specific antibodies consist of, number one, antibodies directed against EBV capsid antigen or VCA. These are the first virus-specific antibodies to appear. IgM anti-VCA antibodies probably develop during the incubation period, peak in the second week of the illness, followed by a rapid decline. IgG anti-VCA antibodies peak in the second to third weeks and persist for life. Second, antibodies directed against Epstein-Barr early antigen or EA. Most patients have a transient response to EA which peaks in weeks two to three. Third, antibodies to Epstein-Barr virus nuclear antigen or EBNA. Antibodies to EBNA do not develop until some weeks into the illness, but are present lifelong in all patients by six months. Heterophile antibodies. Heterophile antibodies are antibodies produced against poorly defined antigens. These are generally weak antibodies with multi-specific activities. I'll talk about them in detail in the diagnosis section. Autoimmune antibodies consist of antibodies against platelets, cold reactive anti-I antibodies, donut Landsteiner cold hemolysins, occasionally antibodies against smooth muscle, thyroid, stomach, rheumatoid, factors and anti-nuclear antibodies. Pathological changes in infectious mononucleosis. Blood picture. Peripheral blood shows leukocytosis. Leukocytosis is from 10,000 to 20,000 per microliter, but in some cases may substantially exceed these levels. Leukocytosis peaks in the second and third weeks and usually persists for one to two months. The first week is occasionally associated with a leukopenia. Peripheral blood shows absolute lymphocytosis. The absolute lymphocyte count most often exceeds 5000 cells per microliter. More than 60% of white blood cells are lymphocytes. 5% to 80% of these lymphocytes are large atypical lymphocytes. They appear on third or fourth day of fever and persist for several months. The features of atypical reactive lymphocyte are 12 to 16 micrometer in diameter, variation in cell size and morphology, abundant pale blue cytoplasm containing multiple clear vacuolations, a round 
oval or indented nucleus, may have eccentric nucleus, few may have open nuclear chromatin, scattered cytoplasmic azurophilic granules. These atypical lymphocytes are distinctive to strongly suggest the diagnosis, but they are not pathognomonic as they can be observed in other viral infections too. Reactive lymphocytes were earlier known as Downy type 1, 2 and 3 depending upon blastoid, monocytoid and plasma cytoid morphology. On the left side is a normal lymphocyte with round nucleus. On the right side there is an atypical reactive lymphocyte. It is large in size. The cell border is indented by the surrounding RBCs giving it the appearance of Dutch skirt. There is abundant basophilic cytoplasm. The nucleus is large with irregular borders. These photomicrographs show atypical reactive lymphocytes in peripheral blood. They are large. There is variation in morphology and size. There is indentation of the cell borders. Cytoplasm is abundant and basophilic. The nuclei are large and oval or irregular. These atypical lymphocytes are downy type 2. They have monocytoid appearance with abundant basophilic cytoplasm and large oval or irregular nuclei. These are the most common type of atypical lymphocytes found in infectious mononucleosis. These atypical reactive lymphocytes are downy type 1. They have blastoid appearance with open nuclear chromatin. They are smaller than type 2 and type 3 cells. These atypical lymphocytes are downy type 3. They have plasma cytoid appearance with eccentric nucleus. Peripheral blood may show neutrophilia or neutropenia. Eosinophilia may be seen. Thrombocytopenia may occur and is occasionally severe. Rarely anemia can occur. Pathological changes in lymph node. Lymph nodes are discrete and enlarged throughout the body. The most common lymph node to be affected by IM is the posterior cervical lymph node. Axillary and inguinal lymph nodes can also be affected. Histological examination shows expansion of paracortical areas due to activation of T cells, immunoblasts, EBV infected B cells resembling reed sternberg cells, mild hyperplasia of B cell areas, EBV infected B cells expressing latency specific genes like EBNA2, LMP1 can be detected in the paracortex using specific antibodies. Sometimes T cell proliferation is too exuberant to distinguish the nodal morphology from that seen in malignant lymphomas. Similar changes in the tonsils and lymphoid tissue of the oropharynx can be seen. The first photomicrograph shows interfollicular expansion. The second photomicrograph shows polymorphous infiltrate consisting of scattered immunoblasts in a background of numerous small mature lymphocytes, plasma cell and histiocytes in lymph node. These photomicrographs of lymph node affected by infectious mononucleosis show extensive immunoblastic proliferation with psychological atypia and numerous mitosis. Pathological changes in bone marrow. Bone marrow is cellular. There is hyperplasia of myeloid, erythroid and megakaryocytic cell lines. Reactive lymphocytes can be seen. This photomicrograph shows reactive lymphocytes in the bone marrow aspirate. The spleen is enlarged, weighing 300 to 500 grams, soft and fleshy. 
hyperemic cut surface. Histological examination shows exa expansion of white pulp follicles and red pulp sinusoids due to presence of numerous activated T cells. The spleen is vulnerable to rupture because the rapid increase in size produces a tense, fragile splenic capsule. Liver shows moderate hepatomegaly. Histological examination shows atypical lymphocytes in portal areas and sinusoids. Scattered isolated cells or foci of parenchymal necrosis may be present. Clinical manifestation of infectious mononucleosis. Most EBV infections in infants and young children either are asymptomatic or present as mild pharyngitis with or without tonsillitis. 75% of EBV infections in adolescents present as IM. IM in the elderly often presents with non-specific symptoms including prolonged fever, fatigue, myalgia and malaise. In elderly patients, pharyngitis, lymphadenopathy, splenomegaly are relatively rare. The incubation period in young adults is 4 to 6 weeks. A prodrome of fatigue, malaise and myalgia may last for 1 to 2 weeks before the onset of fever, sore throat and lymphadenopathy. Fever is usually low grade and is most common in the first 2 weeks of the illness. However, it may persist for more than 1 month. Lymphadenopathy and pharyngitis are most prominent during the first two weeks of illness. Splenomegaly is more prominent during the second and third weeks. Lymphadenopathy most often affects the posterior cervical nodes but may be generalized. Enlarged lymph nodes are frequently tender and symmetric but are not fixed in place. Pharyngitis, often the most prominent sign, can be accompanied by enlargement of tonsils with an exudate resembling that of streptococcal pharyngitis. A papular rash, usually on the arms or trunk, develops in 5% of cases. The severity of the disease correlates with the levels of CD8 positive T cells and EBV DNA in the blood. Most patients have symptoms for 2 to 4 weeks, but nearly 10% have fatigue that persists for more than 6 months. Complications of infectious mononucleosis There can be marked hepatic dysfunction with jaundice, elevated hepatic enzyme levels, disturbed appetite, and rarely even liver failure, immune hemolytic anemia, there can be immune thrombocytopenia, hemophagocytic syndrome, granulocytopenia, pure red cell aplasia due to parvovirus B19 infection. Splenic rupture can occur even with minor trauma leading to hemorrhage that may be fatal. There can be meningoencephalitis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, myocarditis. Those lacking T cell immunity, such as HIV infected individuals or individuals receiving immunosuppressive therapy, have unimpeded B cell proliferation, which may lead to B cell lymphoma or Burkitt lymphoma. Serious consequences of EBV infection occur in individuals suffering from the X linked lymph proliferative syndrome, also known as Duncan disease. It's a rare inherited immunodeficiency syndrome. There are mutations in the SH2D1A gene, which encodes a signaling protein that participates in T cell and NK cell activation and antibody production. Ineffective immune response to EBV is seen here. EBV causes an acute overwhelming infection in these patients that may be fatal. Some succumb to EBV positive B cell lymphoma or infections related to hypogamma globulinemia. Diagnosis of infectious mononucleosis. The diagnosis depends on the following findings in increasing order of specificity. One, lymphocytosis with the characteristic atypical lymphocytes in the peripheral blood. Two, a positive heterophile antibody reaction or monospot test. Three, a rising titer of specific antibodies for EBV antigens. 
viral capsid antigens, early antigens or Epstein Barr nuclear antigen. Heterophile test. The heterophile test is used for, for diagnosis of infectious mononucleosis in children and adults. In this test, the heterophile antibodies are looked for. Human serum is absorbed with guinea pig kidney and the heterophile titer is defined as the greatest serum dilution that agglutinates sheep, horse or cow erythrocytes. A titer of more than 1 is to 256 is diagnostic of infectious mononucleosis. Paul and Bunnell first demonstrated that serum from patients of infectious mononucleosis can agglutinate sheep RBCs. Tests for heterophile antibodies are positive in 40% of patients during the first week of illness and in 80 to 90% of patients during the third week. Therefore, repeated testing may be necessary, especially if the initial test is performed early. Heterophile test usually remains positive for three months after the onset of illness. Heterophile antibodies can persist up to one year. Heterophile antibody does not interact with ABB proteins. These antibodies are usually not detectable in children less than five years of age, in the elderly or in patients presenting with symptoms not typical of IEM. Similar agglutinins are found in low titer in healthy individuals directed against Forsman antigen and in some leukemias and lymphomas as well as serum sickness. Monospot test for heterophile antibodies. The commercially available monospot test for heterophile antibodies is more sensitive than the classic heterophile test. The monospot test is 75% sensitive and 90% specific compared with EBV specific serologies. False positive monospot results are more common among patients with connective tissue disease, lymphoma, viral hepatitis and malaria. Formalin treated horse erythrocytes appear to be agglutinated exclusively by heterophile antibodies of IM and this forms the basis of the monospot test. A sample of the patient's serum or plasma is placed on a microscope slide and mixed with guinea pig kidney antigen and preserved horse erythrocytes which are available commercially. The reagents are mixed thoroughly and the slide is rocked for a minute. If heterophile antibodies are present in the serum or plasma, the blood clumps or agglutinates. EBV specific antibody testing. EBV specific antibody testing is used for patients with suspected acute EBV infection who lack heterophile antibodies and for patients with atypical infections. Titers of IgM and IgG antibodies to viral capsid antigen or VCA are elevated in the serum of more than 90% of patients at the onset of disease. IgM antibody to VCA is more useful for the diagnosis of acute IM because it is present at elevated titers only during the first two to three months of the disease. IgG antibody to VCA is usually not useful for diagnosis of IM but is often used to assess past exposure to EBV because it persists for life. Titers of other antibodies may be elevated in IM. These elevations are less useful for diagnosis. Antibodies to EBNA become detectable 3 to 6 weeks after the onset of symptoms and persist for lifetime. 70% of individuals with IEM have early antigen diffuse antibodies during the illness, detectable 3 to 4 weeks after the onset of symptoms, which persist for 3 to 6 months. Early antigen restricted antibodies occasionally detected in patients with IEM. Detection of high levels of EBV DNA in blood for a few days to several weeks after the onset of IM may be useful if serologic studies yield equivocal results. 
culture of EBV from throat washings or blood is helpful in the diagnosis of acute infection since EBV persists in the oropharynx and in vessels for the lifetime of the infected individual. Treatment consists of supportive therapy, rest and analgesia. Cases with complications need specific management. Differential diagnosis of infectious mononucleosis. The atypical reactive lymphocytes of infectious mononucleosis can mimic the blast cells of acute leukemia. Immunophenotyping is necessary for differentiating between the two entities. The atypical reactive lymphocytes of infectious mononucleosis can mimic lymphoma spillover in blood. In such cases, lymph node biopsy and immunohistochemistry are important to make an accurate diagnosis. Whereas 90% cases of IM are due to EBV, 5 to 10% of cases are due to cytomegalovirus. CMV is the most common cause of heterophile negative mononucleosis. The following table depicts differential diagnosis of mononucleosis syndrome. I'll go through them one by one. Cytomegalovirus mononucleosis. Cytomegalovirus, also known as human herpes virus 5, is a double stranded DNA virus belonging to the family herpes viridae. The most common clinical manifestation of CMV infection in immunocompetent hosts beyond the neonatal period is a heterophile antibody negative mononucleosis syndrome. In late adolescence and young adulthood, CMV is often transmitted sexually and asymptomatic carriage in semen or cervical secretions is common. Transfusion of blood products containing viable leukocytes may transmit CMV. Although mononucleosis syndrome occurs at all ages, it most often involves sexually active young adults. The incubation period of CMV mononucleosis is 20 to 60 days. Illness generally lasts for two to six weeks. Prolonged, it is characterized by prolonged high fever, sometimes with chills, profound fatigue and malaise. Myalgias, headache and splenomegaly are common. In CMV mononucleosis, as opposed to Epstein-Barr virus, exudative pharyngitis and cervical lymphadenopathy are rare. Occasional patients develop rubelliform rashes after exposure to ampicillin or other antibiotics. Less common are interstitial or segmental pneumonia, myocarditis, pleuritis, arthritis, and encephalitis. The characteristic laboratory abnormality in CMV mononucleosis is relative lymphocytosis in peripheral blood with more than 10% atypical lymphocytes. The atypical lymphocytes are predominantly activated CD8 positive T lymphocytes. Total leukocyte counts may be low, normal, or markedly elevated. Serum aminotransferase and alkaline phosphatase levels are often moderately elevated. Heterophile antibodies are absent. Transient immunologic abnormalities are common and may include the presence of cryoglobulins, rheumatoid factors, cold agglutinins, and antinuclear antibodies. DNA PCR can be performed on specimen of blood for diagnosis. Detection of CMV specific IgM is sometimes useful in the diagnosis of recent or active infection. However, circulating rheumatoid factors may result in occasional false positive IgM test. Most patients recover without sequel, although post viral asthenia may persist for months. After recovery, excretion of CMV in urine, genital secretions, and or saliva often continues for months or years. HIV mononucleosis-like illness. Primary HIV infection is a syndrome that includes a mononucleosis-like illness 
as the most common clinical manifestation. Mononucleosis, like illness, appears two to four weeks after HIV infection. Fever, pharyngitis, fatigue, malaise, diffuse rash, oral or genital ulcers, and generalized lymphadenopathy characterize this disease. Atypical lymphocytes are often present. Less common presentations include aseptic meningitis, acute hepatitis, and pneumonitis. Diagnosis can be made by ELISA or P24 antigen detection. Toxoplasma gondii mononucleosis syndrome. Toxoplasma gondii is a protozoa that can cause mononucleosis syndrome in immunocompetent individuals. This disease is caused through human contact with cat feces. It's characterized by fever, pharyngitis, lymphadenopathy, hepatosplenomegaly, maculopapular rash. Atypical lymphocytes may be present. Diagnosis is made by DNA-PCR. Serology is not very useful in these cases. HHV6 mononucleosis-like illness. In adults, primary infection can present with a mononucleosis-like syndrome with prolonged fever, cervical lymphadenopathy, and atypical lymphocytosis. Diagnosis can be made by anti-HHV6 IgM and DNA-PCR. Streptococcal pharyngitis mononucleosis-like illness. It's caused by group A beta hemolytic streptococcus characterized by fever, pharyngitis, lymphadenopathy. There is no splenomegaly and there is absence of atypical lymphocytes. Diagnosis can be made by rapid antigen test or throat culture. Viral hepatitis mononucleosis-like illness. It's characterized by fever, lymphadenopathy and atypical lymphocytes. Sore throat is absent high amino transferase level is present. Rubella can cause mononucleosis syndrome where there is appearance of maculopapular rash, there is absence of splenomegaly. Lymphoma can cause mononucleosis-like illness. Certain drugs like phenytoin, carbamazepin, sulfonamides can cause mononucleosis-like illness. Here, sore throat is absent and it can occur at any age. So, my take home message is infectious mononucleosis is characterized by fever, sore throat, lymphadenopathy, splenomegaly, and atypical lymphocytes. Though EBV is the most common cause, there are several other etiologies that constitute mononucleosis syndrome. It is important to identify them for proper patient management. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Priyanka. Very nice presentation. Thank Very you, clear and uh, your deliberation was so nice and good. Content was very, very good. Very Thank relevant. You, Thank you, and sir. EBV, EBV is very important for from all aspects, from Thank clinical you. aspect, from oncological aspect, as well as becomes a major issues in various differential diagnosis. Yes. Thank you for clarifying so many things and uh, you know taking of this uh, you have handled the mononucleosis syndrome very well. Thank you so much. Thank you sir. All right. Fine. Thank you then. Take care. Good night. Bye bye. Good night. Bye bye. Sir. Bye. Bye. God bless you. Bye. Okay.